Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the distributive property, how to simplify algebraic expressions with it, and how to evaluate them as well. Pause to check out the timestamps and feel free to jump around the video by using them in the description. In addition to just using the property, I'll also go over some application problems and a visual representation using geometry. Simply put, we can take a longer algebraic expression like this and condense it into an expression like this. That being said, we can take a condensed expression like this and expand it to an expression like this. Having three groups of these x plus 5s really means that we have three x's and three 5s, or 15. And having two groups of these three y plus 4s really means that we have six y and two 4s, or 8. While this represents the condensing and expanding, this represents the distributor property, which helps us simplify algebraic expressions a little bit faster. Let me show you a geometric representation of the distributive property. All four of these rectangles have the same outer dimension. That being said, the area of all of these rectangles is going to be 22 times 10, or 220, units squared. However, finding the area of each of these rectangles can be done differently depending on how they're split up. For this first rectangle, we can simply take this 10 and multiply it by 22. That'll get us our total area of 220. For the one beneath it, we could write 10 times 14 plus 8, because 14 plus 8 gives us our entire length of 22. What's interesting though is we could also find the area of the big rectangle by finding the area of the two smaller rectangles first. To do that, we would do 10 times 14 for this rectangle over here, and over here we would do 10 times 8. For this top right rectangle, we could do something similar and multiply 10 times 2 plus 12 plus 6. Since 2 plus 12 plus 6 is also 22, we could also get the area of 220 this way. And if you wanted to find the area of the three smaller rectangles and add them up, you could do so as well. The area of this rectangle would be 10 times 2, the area of the middle rectangle would be 10 times 12, and the area of the right rectangle would be 10 times 6. And for this last one, what if we have an unknown, like a variable? We would multiply 10 times the entire length, which would be x plus 12. While x plus 12 represents the entire length, we could also find the area of the two smaller rectangles by doing 10 times x and 10 times 12. 10x represents the area of this rectangle, and 10 times 12 represents the area of this rectangle. Let's talk about the distributor property on a little deeper level. Here we have three very simple addition problems. Because they're repeated addition, we can rewrite it as multiplication. Let's talk about more about why that works, though. In algebra, there's something called the identity property. That means that if you multiply something by 1, the value doesn't change. The 1s here just represent that we have 1, 5, plus 1, 5, plus 1, 5, plus 1, 5. The 1s here just represent we have one of each of these numbers. If that's the case, each of the terms have a 5 in common, 7 in common, and 8 in common. Since the 5, 7, and 8 are the GCF of each of their expressions, we can factor them out and write the 1s inside the parentheses. Adding the ones together, we can see where these multiplication problems come from. Now let's extend our understanding to these variable expressions. By using the identity property, we can multiply every variable by one without changing the value. Instead of writing the ones individually, we can add them up to see how many there are. We can also see that each of the terms had a w in common, x in common, and y in common. Adding up all the ones together, we can say we have four w's, five x's, and two y's. While most people understand how to get from the repeated addition to the multiplication, it's a little bit more challenging to understand the use of the identity property and the distributor property to make it happen. Now let's take our understanding of repeated addition and the distributor property to some more complicated expressions like this. Notice that we have the 4 plus 5 one time here, the 4 plus 5 again a second time, and the 4 plus 5 again a third time. Notice that we have three of these different 4 plus 5s. We could rewrite this as 3 times 4 plus 5. Using the distributor property, we can see here that we have three of these fours and three of these fives. Here are the three fours, and here are the three fives. We could then rewrite this as three times four plus three times five. Three times four would be 12, and three times five would be 15. Adding these together, we would get 27. If you wanted to, you could have also used the order of operations and added four plus five together to get nine, and multiplied nine by this three on the outside to get 27 as well. While we could have done that, the purpose of this video is to practice using the distributive property. Now let's try an algebraic expression like this. Here we have 2x plus 7 plus 2x plus 7. Here's one of these 2x plus 7s, and here's the second one. Using the identity property, we can say that we have one of each of these. Adding these together, we can say we have two of these 2x plus 7s. Using the distributive property here, we can see we have two of these 2x's and two of these 7s. Two of these 2x's here, 
and two of these sevens. Two of the two x's make 4x, and two of the sevens make 14. While we can get a single answer with the numerical expression above, we're stuck with a variable expression below because we don't know the value of x. Now that you have some background on the distributor property, let's get into some examples together. Grab some paper and something to write with, and let's do some math together. In example one, we're gonna practice condensing expressions using the distributive property. Looking at this first expression, notice how we have this four x plus five, two times. We can write a one here and a one here to represent that we have one of each of these. Condensing this using the distributor property, we can say two times a quantity of four x plus five. Let's try another one here. Notice how we have one of these two x plus nines here, and another, a third one, and a fourth one. Placing ones here doesn't change the value of anything because multiplying anything by one stays the same. And since we have four of these two x plus nines, we can literally write four of these two x plus nines. Remember, we can write repeated addition as multiplication. And here's one last one for this example. We have one of each of these a plus b's, and so we can condense this to write three of these a plus b's, or three times the quantity a plus b. Now in example two, we're gonna practice expanding some of these expressions. Looking at this first one, you should understand this as there are four of these three a plus fives. Therefore, to expand this, we can write I know it's a little tedious, but this is technically what's going on here. We have four of these three a's, which are right here as three a plus three a plus three a plus three a, or 12 a, and we have four of these fives here. One five, two fives, three fives, and four fives or also known as 20. Let's try another one here. Here we have two of these c plus five d's. If we have two of them, we can write. This technically means we have two of these c's, which we do have here, c and c, and we should also have two of these five d's, and here they are. And here's one more example of expansion. We have three of these two e plus seven, so we can write. We should have three of these two e's, and we have one, two, three of them and we should have three of these sevens. One, two, three. And that's how you expand expressions using the distributive property. Now let's practice simplifying algebraic expressions using the distributive property and then evaluating expressions given a value. In each of these four examples, we have a product of terms. This is the first term here, and this is the second term. First, let's distribute this five to this three x and write that we have five of these three x's, or five times three x. Then we can distribute this five over to this eight here and say that we have plus five of these eights. Five of these three x's is equal to 15 x and five of these eights is equal to positive 40. This would be our algebraic expression written as a sum of terms. Looking at the one to the right, let's start by distributing this two to this eight y. This really means that there are two of these eight y's or two times eight y. Then distributing this two to this three here, we have two of these threes or two times three. Two of these eight y's really means we have 16 y, and two of these threes really means we have six. This would be our answer here. Looking at the one on the bottom left, we're gonna to have to start by distributing this two thirds to this nine h. We can write two thirds times nine as a fraction, which is going to be nine over one h, and distributing this two thirds to this 24 here, we can write two thirds multiplied by 24 as a fraction, which is 24 over one. Cross canceling, we can divide the three by three to get one, and the nine by three to get three. In the numerator, two times three is going to be six, and in the denominator, one times one is one, so we have six over one h, plus, and we can cross cancel this three and 24 to make one and eight. Two times eight is going to be 16 on top, and one times one is gonna be one on bottom. Simplifying just a bit more, we can write this as six h plus 16. This would be our sum of terms. Now let's try one more, but with decimals. We'll start by distributing this 1.5 to this eight v. We can write this as 1.5 times eight v. Then we can distribute this 1.5 to the 20 here. Doing so, we can write 1.5 multiplied by 20. This term here simplifies to 12v. Over here, we need to multiply 1.5 times 20. A little shortcut you could have used for multiplication here is moving the decimal one space to the right for this number and one space to the left for this number and just multiply 15 times two to get 30. We're gonna write a 30 here and that'll be our final expression. Now let's try simplifying an algebraic expression that has more terms. While you may first look at this 3x and 7x and want to combine them right away, you actually can't because it goes against the order of operations. Plus, this 3x isn't really just 3x because of this 4 over here. The 4 really means that we have 4 of these 3x's. 
When combining like terms, we're always adding or subtracting. What's more important than adding and subtracting is going to be multiplying and dividing. Since the distributive property is really a form of multiplication, it's going to be more important than adding or subtracting. We're going to start by distributing this 4 to this 3x and this 4 to this 1. 4 times 3x gets us 12x, and 4 times 1 gets us 4. To the right here, we still have this plus 8 and this plus 7x. Now we have four terms, and we don't have any parentheses or multiplication in the way. This 12x and 7x are like terms, so we can combine them by adding their coefficients and getting 19x. This 4 and 8 are both constant terms, which are like terms with each other, and we can combine those two to make 12. This is as simplified as we can get here. And let's try one more here. Following the order of operations, multiplication has to come first here. Distributing this 7 to the 3x, we're saying we have 7 of these 3x's, which means we have 21x. And distributing this 7 to the 2 here means we have 7 of these 2's, or just 14. Now multiplying and distributing over here, 8 times this 2x really means we have 16x. And distributing this 8 to this 5 here means we have 8 of these 5's, and that's 40. 21x and 16x are like terms since they both have the variable x. So we can add the coefficients of 21 and 16 to get 37x. And we can add the constant terms of 14 and 40 together to get 54. This would be our simplified algebraic expression. Now let's go one step further. I'm going to tell you that the value of x is going to equal 5. Let's try simplifying a couple algebraic expressions using the distributive property and then evaluating it when x is equal to 5. Well, we could take this x equals 5 and substitute it in right here for this x and substitute it in here for this x, we're going to simplify the algebraic expression first using the distributive property, and then substituting the 5 in to solve it. Starting with multiplication, we're going to use the distributive property. The 4x here is still going to be here at the end. 6x and 4x are like terms, and can be combined to make 10x. Since 12 is our only constant here, it can't be combined with anything. This is our simplified algebraic expression, since we have no more like terms. Let's take our x equals 5 here, and substitute it in for x. 10x really means 10 times x, which means we have 10 times 5. And then we're going to add 12 on after. This would be the value of our expression when x is equal to 5. Now let's try a couple geometry applications here. Pause the video to read the question to yourself, then unpause it when you're ready to go over it together. For this first one, we have a rectangle. This is our sketch with our labeled dimensions. To find the perimeter of a rectangle, remember that we just take 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Calling this side the length and this side the width, we can write 2 times the quantity of 5x plus 8 plus 2 times 7. Remember, this is our L, or our length, and this is our W, or our width. We have two of these 5x's and we have two of these 8's. We can rewrite this as 10x plus 16. Since 2 times 7 is also multiplication, we can solve this in this step and get 14. Of the three terms left, we have two constant terms of 16 and 14, which are like terms. They can be combined to make 30. This is our most simplified algebraic expression that represents the perimeter. Since we're given the value of x is equal to 3, we can substitute that in to find the actual perimeter here. Substituting in here, we're going to get 10 times 3 plus 30. The perimeter of this rectangle would be 60 meters if x was equal to 3. Now to find the area of this rectangle, we have to remember that area is equal to length times width. Our length was 5x plus 8, and our width is equal to 7. Even though the number outside of the parentheses is to the right here, we can still distribute. 7 of these 5x's is going to be 35x, and 7 of these 8's is equal to 56. This was our expression for area, and this is our simplified version. Again, since we know that x is equal to 3, we can substitute that in for x here and solve for the actual area if x is equal to 3. The area of this rectangle would be 161 square meters if x was equal to 3. Now that we're done with this rectangle here, let's try this triangle. To make things easy, I just sketched a right triangle here. This is our sketch with our labeled dimensions. This can be the base here, and this can be the height. To find the area of a triangle, we need the formula area is equal to base times height divided by 2. Substituting in here, we have our base of 3x plus 5, and we have our height of 12. We can write at the end or we can write at the beginning. Either one is fine. And all of this is going to be over 2. We can distribute this 12 to the 3x and 12 to the 5. That's going to be a total of 36x. And if we have 12 of these 5s, that's going to be 60. This is going to be over 2. 36x plus 60 over 2 is the same thing as 36x over 2 plus 60 over 2. 
We can simplify our 36 and 2 to make 18 and 1, and we can simplify our 60 and 2 to make 30 and 1. Our final expression could be written as 18x plus 30. While this is our expression that represents the area, this is our most simplified version. Given that x is equal to 7, we can now substitute this in to find out the actual area if x is equal to 7. Substituting in 18 times x, or 18 times 7, plus 30, The area of this triangle would be 156 square feet if x was equal to 7. And that concludes this video on the distributive property. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.